Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek, your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's podcast, this is one of my favorite podcasts, we have coaching grads, Jason and Clint Spiro, our first cousin duo. Scott Todd is out today. Jason and Clint, welcome. How are you guys? What's up? Doing well. Nice to be here. So let's just get into it, fellas. Um, First of all, tell everybody how you got into land investing. So uh, we both grew up out in the country, an hour or two outside of Houston. I was, did a lot of hunting and fishing. Our family had a bunch of land. And um, it, a good chunk of it, though, was an undivided interest. And um, we ended up losing a bunch of it around when I got out of college. Um, an investor bought everybody else's share and forced my parents to sell, or not sell, but subdivide it. Um, and so I was pretty devastated from that. You know, we lost a bunch of our land. Um, and I always had this goal to get a bunch of land and, uh, had this drive for that. And, um, at some point, I think the end of 2014, a, a family friend contacted me and said, Hey, there's some land next to your parents that's going up for the tax auction. And so I jumped on that. I learned a lot about the tax auction. Um, I, uh, was ready. I took a loan out. I was ready to buy this property. I spent a thousand dollars for a lawyer to do a title report for me, which is crazy, right? That I could do it now for like in five minutes and five dollars. You know, I could. Um, right. But I, I did all that, and uh, I learned a lot. And um, a couple of days before the auction, you know, they struck it off the list. And uh, I was like, well, this is good because now instead of buying this property, I'm going to keep. Um, I could try to. Book you know, take what I've learned and try to buy more property. And around the same time, I was um, on a road trip with a coworker, a millennial coworker, who uh, introduced me to podcasts. I had never listened to a podcast before. <laughs> and uh, so I, first thing I looked up was about, you know, real estate. And I pulled up, a, found something called Flip Nerd. And when I looked at the titles there, I found one that said invest in raw land. And it was a podcast that you did, Mark. Um, and I listened to that and took your advice and went to www.thelandgeek.com. Um, and from there, I just, I was just constantly watching all of your corny little videos that you made and, uh, got the toolkit and, um, that was in yeah early 2015 and around that time my kid um, who was about one and a half at the time stopped sleeping and it was just really rough um but um i did buy a couple properties and in october 2015 um i went to the first boot camp and i asked uh, because i was so limited on time i mean i was working i'm gonna wake up at five deal with the long commute in Houston traffic. And, um, you know, I asked my cousin Clint, uh, to come join me and, uh, he jumped on board and came to Vegas with me and went, yeah, to, boot we went to boot camp. And I, I didn't know anything about the land geek until I went to boot camp. I learned everything right there with you, man. That is, that, that's, inc- that's crazy. I, I remember meeting both of you guys at that boot camp, and, um, and Clint was like, like, just like this character in the, in the elevator and, and, and Jason's like more the engineering type. And so how, how did you guys like structure it to, to work together? Well, I also, I have an associates in business and I had worked in pawn shops for a long time. Um, so I had, I'm the, his negotiator kind of, so that's yeah. kind of how it's structured. Yeah. And I mean, I, I had a re- I had a really good job, um, with, engineering and i mean i did some sales project management um, i was a technical supervisor i mean I had a really good job and uh but clint was more i really don't like having those awkward conversations with the on the acquisition side and i mean he's perfect he spent all the time in the pawn shops he's a, he's a dealer um and so and we were practically brothers i mean growing up um living next to each other so um knew it could work and so asked him to help kind of do a bunch of the, I'll take care of the, um, some of the management side. And he does, uh, you know, some of the marketing and talking to people and 
um, setting up everything to begin with. Um, and right after that boot camp, uh, we did the coaching and, um, you know, did through the coaching and then starting 2016, um, and that's when we started selling properties and, um, you know, 2018 was a big year. Last year was a pretty big year. Um, so I mean, since then we sold over 3 million properties. It's 3 million in properties. Yeah, yeah. 3 million in, I mean. It's like a hundred, how many you say what? 120. 120 properties. Yeah. 120 properties and an enterprise value over 3 million? Yeah, yeah. about 3.2. 3.2 million. And so uh, I know, Clint, you've got a crazy story. What, you know, what's your, what's your craziest cash deal? Cash deal? Cash um, deal. I guess the easy one is just we paid 10 grand or something and sold it for 400. Yeah. Tell me about that deal. <laughs> like, like everyone listening wants to, wants to pay 10 and sell it for $400,000. Yeah, well, and that one, well, first when we saw it, we we're like, well, you know, we don't really know much about this area, but it is three three miles from a Walmart, you know, two miles, two miles from a Walmart. You know, you start looking into stuff like that. You're like, you know, this is an area that kind of has some stuff. You're like, I don't know. Um, but that was one thing. The other thing on that one, someone was trying to buy it for 300000 And I remember I negotiated with them. I was actually kind of driving and I had just sent them a few short emails and they they wanted to buy for three hundred thousand, and I said, "Oh yeah, I'll give you a thirty acres for three hundred thousand, no problem." It was a forty. Acre. It was forty acres, <laughs> and they said, uh, "There's like, oh, um, well, we'll give you thirty five. And I said, "I'll give you thirty five acres for three hundred fifty, no problem." And then they finally said, "Okay, we'll give you four hundred. So I negotiated thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars while I was driving in like twenty minutes or something. That's the mm -hmm. kind of wow. Yeah, the crazy thing with that was we had no idea because um, the market changed, you know, the demand in that area and the market changed and I had no idea. I thought maybe I thought it was a good deal. I thought we we're maybe we're going to sell it for 70 grand. And Clint said, no, we're going to let's list this for like 150. And then we started getting calls and we had an offer from day one for 100 grand. And I was like, I just wanted to take it, you know, and that's why right. I am. <laughs> You know, because um, he, you know, was as broke as a joke as, you know, he was. Yeah, at that time, yeah. And he was like, no, I was we need hungry, to turn it down. I was hungry for the money and I didn't, I, you know, you can't walk away from the table when you know there's a lot that you yeah. care about. The, because people called from. us and, you know, then it was like, okay, take it off the market, relist it. So, higher. yeah, we ended up marketing it for what we were marketing for 450 or something. Yeah. After we marketed it for 150. So that's a, that's probably the only property we've changed. We've yeah. marketed higher than we started. With. And and you saw yourselves. You didn't have to use a, a local broker to get that kind of money. I assume you went through a title company. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, pretty much. What do you say? I mean, anything over kind of five grand or something that has a high potential it just depends. But we'll go to title companies a lot. Um, the and then you know a lot of the other success. Like, kind of took that that pumpkin plan approach of um, what was so special about this property. And I found all the qualities of that. And then I went to, you know, took a little, spent a little bit more time researching and found some just like it and, you know, quadrupled some of the offers. Is there's a big difference between two miles from the Walmart here versus out the other parts of this county where I knew people were offering, you know, hundred dollars an acre. And, um, that got us several more properties that were, um, you know, I paid a lot more money for, but then, you know, we made, you know, we had another property, um, sold it for a few hundred grand and, um, yet another one that sold the same thing, but on terms. So, um, I mean, yeah, we have a term for one that's a 20 year note, yeah. $600 for 20 years with like, what was it down? 50 grand 50 grand down for, and 2700 a month um and we we paid 60 for it <laughs> and we only sold three quarters of the property yeah we still own so, some yeah of it. we we kept some of it just to keep long term um, and we do that too with a bunch of property a bunch of stuff to buy where we grew up we, we keep a bunch of those properties just to have so um, fully accumulating i want to have a hundred thousand acres you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the, these numbers are insane. 
They're just insane. Because I think it's the biggest deal that I've heard of where somebody paid 10000 and sold it for 400000 and we we had um, we had another one that was basically same as this property. And I, I went through the maps. I found another one. You know, somebody lives out of state, and I contacted them and, <coughs> and bought it. But um, we had a deal. Somebody was going to buy it for uh, half a million uh, cash, and um, they drug it along for a year, and it was just a bunch of headaches. And then COVID happened. A bunch of companies went bankrupt, and it was a mess, but we ended up selling it on terms. Um, okay. So, but I think we can't beat the that one deal. Mm -hmm. on and but those other deals uh, are they happen all the time. The smaller deals, the you know, you buy something five or ten, sell it for fifty, and that happens a lot. So. No, I mean, and those, I mean, those are those are still, you know, we sell it for five, ten, sell it for fifty. That's that's a solid, you know, triple. Right. Yeah. Um, for sure. Those are great deals. Um, so how much time are you guys working actually in the business? I barely do anything. I mean, I, I travel a lot. I mean, I work some, but I, I don't, I don't remember the last time I've worked like 15 hours a week. Yeah. I can't I, tell you the last time I worked 15 hours a week when we started up, I was sure maybe working 60 hours a week doing, you know, starting it up making the website, all that stuff. But in the past three years, nah, I, yeah. I'm just hanging out. And I, um, I was fortunate. <laughs> I mean, I said I had a, a good job um, in a great position, but the commute was, it was like that opening scene of office space where you're just, it was brutal. And uh, I mean, I had two young kids and I wanted to be home. So in, in 2019, um, I, uh, you know, I left that job and I um, took a little vacation and I, I still work with them part time as a consultant. Um, so I, you know, I may work four to, you know, 15 hours a week with that. And then I, you know, just work an hour or two a day on land. So, so you're both kind of tired. Yeah. <laughs> so you work where you want, when you want, with who you want. Yeah, no, I called it my semi-retirement. And yeah. uh it's you know i know we could um send out a bunch more offers or we could really hit it harder but we're both kind of you know relaxed i mean i wake up and have breakfast with the kids and take them to school and i coach my kids baseball team it's um i wouldn't trade it for anything so yeah i don't have any stress so <laughs> he doesn't he's he doesn't have a you know a wife and kids that he can go wherever <laughs> he travels a lot and um, enjoy life. So. Wow. Okay. So if I'm listening to this and I'm a newbie and I want to be like Jason and Clint and be retired in a few years. What, what advice would you give people? Um, I love the, uh, the top thing, the one thing, you know, like just do one mm -hmm. thing every day to keep it moving. If you don't have time to do anything, just try to do, you know, market one property, make one phone call. That's a big thing for me because sometimes even if I do have the time, but I don't feel like it, if there's just one thing you can do to keep it moving. Yeah. So I called him tots for the one thing and I, I'll send him a tot. And so he knows, okay, that's the, that's the one thing I need to do. Um, and so yeah, I call it the tots. Um, I mean, really just if you're motivated or if you really want to do this, I mean, go just go get all the resources that you offer and, you know, do the coaching, do whatever you need to do. And I mean, you won't be just disappointed. I know when I, I was a, about as penny pincher as you could get, I was very conservative with my money. And so spending money was very hard for me. And, you know, after watching, you know, listening to a bunch of your podcasts and everything else and um, dealing with the commute, I mean, I, I just, I wanted to do something and, um, I remember talking to you and you said this was the best investment you ever make. And there was no question it was, it was. You know, so. Oh yeah. I, I remember I had to push you, Jason. Um, <laughs> but it was funny, you know, sitting there watching these videos and, you know, my wife was there next to me looking and she's like, is that that uh, Russian car salesman guy? Like, what is <laughs> like, and I'm like, he's like, are you watching that videos again? And, um, you know, I thought, I thought she was going to give me a hard time. She was very, you know, she was supported and trusted me that I knew what I was doing. And, you know, now it's, 
we get to stay at home together. So it's nice. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, it's, it's amazing uh, to listen to it. I'm, I'm so proud and, and happy for both of you and uh, in, in that journey is, and it didn't take that long. I mean, 2015, really, what, it was about three years then. Yeah, there's about two years of struggling, and then it just kind of picked, just snowballed. Yeah. And I think, I think year two, I mean, there was still about 175,000 in sales, but um, yeah, year year three is when it really kicked off. And um, now we, the past is nice because we can handle those fluctuations and. Um, you know, I have a pretty good profit first system going on, um, keep up with the savings and everything else. And so it's just it's slowly growing. And wow. Is, is there any other time saving techniques you guys would recommend to people? Any software or services that you, you really like? I mean, my tip of the week is something like that. Okay. Well, don't tell us yet then. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, really just doing one little thing a day. Uh, I mean, I'm an Excel guru, so I'm, I do a lot of that. Uh, the scrubbing and everything else is just nothing for me. Um, so yeah. what's your, what's your fixed overhead like with your virtual assistants? Um, <laughs> it's just right now it's just us. I've, I very <laughs> seldom use the virtual assistants. So, um, oh my gosh. Well, we pretty much do everything. We tried to hire an assistant one time. Well, the other thing is I was kind of over my head doing a little too much, spinning too many plates. And I also then tried to hire someone. And I was there also in that two year mark, like in that two year mark, and I wasn't really getting paid much. And I just crashed and burned. No, I think, um, <laughs> uh, I, I guess I've used, I had used some VAs in the past. And, um, I think it just depends what county you're doing, what type of properties you're dealing with. Um, and if you're doing the high volume with a bunch of the smaller properties, I think you need VAs and you need to keep it going. And it's whatever your bottleneck is. Um, I think a lot of people, the bottleneck is kind of scrubbing the list to, to get the offers out. And um, that's not really a problem for me because I scrub them pretty quick. Um, um, if I get to a county where it's just being a little complicated to do that, then I could send it out to a VA, but um, the title search and everything else, I um, mean, usually I take care of it or it's going to the title company. Um, I, don't know. Yeah, I don't know what else, um, but there's, we're getting to the point where we want to get bigger, you know, we're going to need to get those, I think that's the one thing we need to really get to is uh, bringing in those assistance oh yeah you did just start uh sending the offer letters out different right yeah i mean so i mean because i do a lot of the stuff um you know myself uh, i don't send out a ton of offers um uh, and you know my daughter likes kind of taking the little sticky thing off the envelope so <laughs> but um yeah i mean we do all this with just really pretty much us so Amazing. And, and what about funding? Do you guys have outside funding? Do you self-fund? Oh, no, it's self-fund. I started out, um, you know, when I was trying to buy that property by my parents. It was a, like a $25,000 loan. And then I sold about ten or 15000 in stocks I had because um, they're stocks. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, uh, and then, you know, I added some more money that I had to it. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, and then, you know, mainly, mainly some of those big deals that kind of replenished it. And wow. So what, what does the family think of all this? Well, my, it's funny, my, my mom, you know, over the years, every time she finds out she's so, you know, she's so worried and, and more conservative than I am when it comes to spending things. And it's just funny listening to all the people trying to talk you out of it or saying, Oh, you sure about that? You sure about you bought that? another property? Oh, you better watch <laughs> out. You better watch out for that. Um, yeah, you don't want something over there. That's the bad area. I'm like, no, it's there. You better watch out for water. It might not have water. I'm like, well, these people know it doesn't have water. <laughs> that means I could buy it for cheap. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's a lot of not listening, you know, not listening to people. Um, 
But otherwise, I think they're stoked to see the success. Yeah. No. No. Everybody is supportive and happy. It's just they don't. Nobody understands really how how we're doing it. So. That's so funny, and no one wants to join. Like, no, I've I've asked, um, you know, or I've offered advice or told people, and most most just won't do it. <laughs> He actually had a friend that he got from his other company in on it that he's selling like Amazon stuff or whatever. And he bought a bunch of properties, but then just let him sit there. And so we just bought, how many was it? Like nine of them. Nine properties from his friends. <laughs> I was together. like, do you still have all those properties? <laughs> wow. he like, yeah, I don't do anything with them. And uh, I was like, well, I'll buy them from him. So I basically bought them from him less than wholesale and... <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, okay, I spent 17 grand. Like a bunch on of 20 acre properties. Yeah, I'm like, this is going to be about 1500 in passive uh, in like six months. So, <laughs> uh, it's yeah. crazy, crazy. Well, this is such an inspirational story, and I'm I'm so glad you guys took the time to come on the podcast and just. Thanks to you, Mark. We have the time. <laughs> yeah, and you have the time. It's amazing. So thank you. But now we're at that point where we want to ask one more tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Um, so mine, I used to spend a lot of time on like the county CAD website trying to locate properties and stuff. And uh, I've been using the Land Glide app which is like 10 bucks a month or whatever but I, mean, I can be on the phone with someone and type in their name and bring up their property like that now and so that yeah that app's amazing it streamlines everything i i love it i don't know how i did things without it honestly yeah um <clears throat> and i would say uh i would give a book um I know there's a bunch of books that have been on there, so I was thinking of one that I hadn't heard. Um, and if you're if you're a listener and you're really motivated about this and you haven't read uh, Four Hour Work Week and Rich Dad Poor Dad and Think and Grow Rich Top Three, if, if you read those three and you really want to do this and you're stuck in a rat race of whatever corporate job you have, I mean, it's kind of hard for me to picture somebody reading those three books and not taking action and doing something. I mean, I, I, you read all those and it just made you hate everything that wasn't a four hour work week. <laughs> and, um, but if I want to say a book, um, it's called the goal by, uh, Ellie, L E R gold, gold rat. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and that, um, I use it, I've applied it in a, my engineering job as a project manager and you could apply it with the land too, but it, it covers, finding the bottleneck in a um, manufacturing process. And they cover a story of somebody that owns a manufacturing plant, but you got to do the same thing even with the land um, for each stage in the process. And you can't just send out, you know, a hundred thousand offers and expect the next phase of the process to handle all of them. So you got to find that balance of, you know, is it a hundred offers a week versus how many, um, you know, ads you need to post, how much money you have, and, and you balance all of that, and you could optimize it. And um, I really, I apply that in all phases of you know, my life. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, my tip of the week is learn how you can duplicate Jason and Clint's success. And it all starts with just a phone call. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training and see if this business is right for you. You start in flight school and then you can go into coaching and we're going to take you up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd, who's done it thousands of times. And next thing you know, your biggest problem is going to be what Jason Clint's biggest problem is. What do we do today? Too much free time. Too much free time. No, I am. So just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Jason, Clint, this has been amazing. Any final words of advice? I'll say thank you, Mark. No, no idea. Move, move the That's, needle real hard. Yeah, amazing. And I, I can still, you know, I, I still picture it, uh, that first boot camp with you guys. And um, it's to see that that journey, um, you know, I, I say this all the time, but like I can now die in peace professionally 
Like, you know, and it, it's, it's so gratifying for me. So thank you guys. And, um, and you did the work. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, so it, it all goes to you, but, uh, I'm immensely, immensely proud. I really am. And that, um, uh, that, that story of that American businessman, uh, at the Mexican fishing village, that was the first time I heard it was at your boot camp, And I've listened to that thing. Um, uh, chapter 14 of four hour work week. I've listened to that probably a hundred times. And, you know, that was the biggest thing I got from that boot camp. I remember you telling me that and that just instantaneously just changed my thought on everything. Yeah. And that's how we start every boot camp. That's like the ritual is that story. Well, thanks guys. Um, I want to thank the listeners, remind them the only way I'm going to get Jason Clint to come back and tell us more crazy stories about buying land for 10 grand and selling it for 400,000 cash is if you do us three favors, you got to follow us, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to dub your money 30 days or less. All right, guys, are we good? Awesome. Good. All right, are we doing this? I don't know. He could. It's uh, what is it again? Oh, it's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. Let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Later. Later. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttop.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.